Michael Musto, I am here to take you to task on your Oscar predictions. Uh, do you have any self-doubts or are, uh, are you absolutely firm at this point? I'm filled with self-doubts <laughs> about these predictions, Tom. This is the one year where it's an open field, in my opinion, for this picture. I know. There have been other years where it's down to two. I always pick the wrong one of the two. <laughs> in this case, there's seven. There is seven. There's Dunkirk, which right now is my number one, but I'm not that confident about that. Oh, okay. We'll there's get to that. There's three billboards, which I adored. Call Me By Your Name, Get Out, Lady Bird, Shape of Water, The Post. Mm -hmm. And why do you have Dunkirk at number one? Is it a placeholder for now, or do you think it can win? All year I sort of thought this is a swirling, visceral war film that uh, is unique and spectacular. But the more I hear people's reactions, I think some people don't think it was a complete film. They think it was all effect. They criticize the CGI. But I mean, that's how films are made nowadays, so why would you criticize that? I and know. it's an epic in the old tradition. I think maybe there's an assumption we're making that they're going to go for the big screen. Uh, big pi Best picture often meant big picture in the past, but that's not been the case where uh, in, we live in a world now where moonlight wins. That's not a big picture. Right, and of course, Doug Kirk is not big with the SAGs because it's not an ensemble. I mean, it is an ensemble. It's the ultimate ensemble. There's eight million people on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not <laughs> so much about the acting. It's about the visuals. Okay, so if not Dunkirk, what next? What are the movies that can win? Well, like I say, I love three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I, I have that at number one. Really uh, brilliant. I, I, it's not at all an Oscar-type movie. It's not, but on the other hand, I had the same connection to it that you did. And I think it, it connects powerfully with people. Uh, and it's real art. It's, it's a movie that takes chances. And I keep rummaging through my mind, has there ever been a film like this that won the Oscar for Best Picture? No Country for Old Men, obviously very different, okay, very but, different. Uh, but it, yes, I see what you're saying. Fargo but, was more comic, didn't win. But why can't a picture just win? There was never a movie like Moonlight that won. So I think we're in the era now of rule breaking mm -hmm, for Best mm -hmm, Picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Shape of Water, to me, was a little heavy-handed, but beautiful to look at. To me, it's a, a remake of Tell Me That You Love Me, Junie Moon, Liza Minnelli. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. In this case, we have the gay guy, the scaly creature, and the, oh, the, that the is, mute. That and and Oscar funny. loves a deaf Tell mute. Tell me that you Oscar love loves a deaf moon, mute. Junie Moon. Uh, it, it could have the most nominations. I think it will have a lot of nominations because of all the visual stuff. Yeah. And Guillermo could win director, right? I mean, they, they love these Mexican. They love the split. Yeah. They, they love splitting director and picture. So, but that still doesn't answer what's picture. Well, call, all right, me, so call me by your name. Can call me by your name win best picture? It's not up for SAG Ensemble, which surprised me. You cannot get a more LGBTQ friendly group in the world than than SAG. And it and not only did it not get the ensemble nomination, but it didn't get supporting for Army or for Michael. Surprising, but uh, the SAGs are a little kooky. They march yeah, to yeah, their yeah. own drum. But um, I was thinking, has a love story ever won? Well, this isn't just a love story. This is a gay love story. Moonlight won last year. It would be two years in a row for a gay movie. That would be amazing. That would be a great act of atonement for Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> um, there's never been, as far as I'm concerned, a pure love story that won Best Picture, has there? I mean, like Annie Hall is a romantic comedy. Right, right. But, well, Gone with the Wind, but it doesn't quite end in a loving that's way. A, that's a historical <laughs> epic. I know, you know, I know, I know. I don't know, but again, rules are meant to be broken, so Call Me By Your Name should not be ruled out. Right. And Lady Bird is actually leading the collective Gold Derby odds now. So in other words, when we take all the predictions of the experts of the top 24, and the editors, and all users, and our top 24 all-stars, and mash all that together, the, our collective wisdom is a site which, by the way, historically has the most accurate predictions. Wow. So, oh, it's, it's more there. Those odds, if you want to win your office pool, just steal the Gold Derby collective odds. Right now, those odds. I say, liked Lady Bird. I, say don't, Lady Bird. I don't see it winning. Just Why not? Because it's a, it's a coming of age. It's sort of like Juno or something. Juno didn't win. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a great film. Greta Gerwig has a great eye. She plumbed into her own growing up process. Uh, the performances are terrific, and it's very observant. It has a gay character. It has two girls also dancing at the prom together. Um, best picture? I don't think so. Okay. Well, is Greta getting in for a director? Do you have her on your list? I don't. I do, but I'm not sure of that because I think Martin McDonough would get one too. I think Luca, obviously, for Call Me by Your Name. I think Jordan Peele for Get Out. Then you don't have room for Nolan and for. But here's um, the thing: we have Del Toro, we have Nolan, we have Spielberg. So I'm already overshooting here. 
I know, I know. And of course, my predictions right now are just temporary because they. I mean, it's it's two months away at least. Yeah, but we can uh, talk about where the. This is the fun part, isn't it? This is the race. This is where we don't know what's happening, but things get momentum. Right now, in the next few days, the voters will be voting, and uh, they just got "Call Me by Your Name" in the last three days uh, as a DVD screener at home. There's the, so are they watching it or are they saying to themselves, hmm? I gotta see all those other damn screeners first before I watch that, uh, that gay one that's so controversial. Uh, we have to kind of strategize this as pundits and think, how is this playing out? Tom, we all, uh, everyone's at Gold Derby pretty much said, Ridley Scott is winning director for The Martian. He wasn't nominated. <laughs> he wasn't nominated. I know, I know. We all said, Aaron Sorkin is winning screenplay for Steve Jobs. He wasn't nominated. Once the nominations come out, that changes everything. And to me, the DGA nominations are really the best harbinger. If Greta Gerwig doesn't get a DGA nomination, I don't think Lady Bird has a chance to get Best Picture. Okay. Don't you agree? Yes, I think that's very telltale. But on the other hand, we know the director's branch at the Academy is small and the DGA voter base is massive, so they don't necessarily line up. Uh, but yet it's telling. It's Nothing a tea, lines It's up. a tea leaf, you're saying. All right, so... Uh, Best actor, uh, we all assumed that Gary Oldman had it in the bag. He's certainly leading by a mile and a half, uh, the predictions. But this Tim Ote is really hot. He's pulling Eddie Redmayne. He's on the ground campaigning. We see him at all the events, and he's charming and handsome, just like Eddie, and working the town. And he's in Lady Bird, and, and he's, he's in, in Hostiles. Yes. And when I saw Call Me By Your Name, which I loved, I thought it was a brilliant uh, drama, I watched his performance and thought, he can't get nominated. It's not that kind of performance. It's more reactive. It's not big, dramatic scenes. Look, Michael, we live in a world where Jean Dujardin wins best Thank actor. you. <laughs> then I realized that. <laughs> and then I also realized it's a really slim field this year for best actor. It is, very slim. It's tight for actress, but for actor, they're going to have trouble even filling the five. So, yeah, he's a shoe in for a nomination. I don't think he's going to win. I think it'll be Gary Oldman. But can he win? Can Timote win? Yes, he can. And New York film critics went young. They went for him and Cherche. And LA film critics went for Timote. A lot of people are going I mean, for Timote and Cherche. Uh, and we're looking for, those, for that momentum. But the Oscar voters do tend to go for the hot new young chick and not necessarily exactly. the, the hot new young chick. And dog. for best actor, they sometimes like to reward a career. And that's going to happen also with supporting. Willem Dafoe is winning everything. And I think he will win the Oscar for the Florida Project. Do you? Project. Okay. I think it's part. And Sam Rockwell was great. He would be a great choice for three billboards. Willem Dafoe has that career thing going. It would be his third nomination. But if there's this billboard sweep, uh, Sam Rock, who would get in then? Sam Rockwell or uh, Woody Harrelson? They were both amazing. They both deserve nominations. Sam Rockwell's character has more of an arc. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, let's not say what the arc is. Right, right, right. Uh, it's the joy of the movie that it takes these surprising turns. Yeah. Um, I, th I think Rockwell's going to win. I think that uh, uh, the problem with the Florida Project is that it's not going to get a lot of nominations in other categories, but that didn't hurt uh, Christopher Plummer. Beginners got no other nominations, as I recall, maybe one other. Yeah, it's, and, it's uh, irrelevant. And it's irrelevant in some cases, yeah. Well, it's, it's, I, I just think Willem Dafoe seems to be winning everything. Has there ever been something where someone has won every Oh, yeah, award? it happens all the time. But what about uh, Michael Stuhlbarg did not get in at SAG and has been shut out, I think, a few other places. Uh, and I still have him as, as winning right now as a, because he has that little speech, the heartfelt speech that uh, tends to tug at the heartstrings that they look for. And he performs it beautifully. And yeah. when I watched it, I was like, this is a master class. He definitely deserves a nomination. Army Hammer, I was surprised they put in supporting. He I really know, is the co-lead. Right. But I think they both should get nominated. Obviously, Willem Dafoe, and I think uh, Richard Jenkins for The Gay Guy in The Shape of Water, which is about three misfits kind of banding together against the bad guys during the Cold War era. And um, who's the other one? Army Hammer, Michael Stilberg, Willem Dafoe, Richard Jenkins. Mm-hmm. I have to hold on my thing here. Let's look, at our, let's look at our list here. We got Michael's predictions up on the screen. Yes, let's see what these wrong predictions are. <laughs> we have... Um, you have those five nominees there, okay. So that, yeah, that's fine. Sam Rockwell, of course, we met. So over, over to supporting actress, then, uh, you've got Laurie Metcalf. I'm with you. Uh, some people feel very strongly about Allison Janney. Uh, uh, so look, what is your best Laurie Metcalf argument? Well, Alice and Jenny was terrific, and I, Tonya, as the horrifying mother. And at the end of the movie, when you see the real mother, you go, wow, she really nailed it. Uh, but that character doesn't have an arc. Even when you think she's being nice, she's not being nice. 
Lori Metcalf is much more complicated, that character. She's, she could be a monster mother, or she could be well-meaning, or she's doing her best, or she says the wrong thing, and it kind of works itself out within the movie. And Lori Metcalf, of course, won the Tony. And three for, Emmys for Doll's House. But, parts of, yeah, yeah and, and she could get another Emmy for Roseanne, so this could be like Tony, Oscar, Emmy, all in a very <laughs> short span of time. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and she's that workaday actor that they love. Like that's why J.K. Simmons and people like that win. They love the veteran uh, 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 who's you know, slogging it out in the trenches, has been there for decades, and finally is yeah, getting noticed. Yeah, but Laurie Metcalf is not known as a film actress. I mean, no, I know that, but still, uh, being being a dutiful foot soldier in the business counts. Uh, who else? Well, Holly Hunter got dissed by the Golden Globes, but I think she's going to get in for the Big Sick. The Big Sick must not have thrown a lunch for the Golden Globes or something. What happened? I don't know. I, I, the members I spoke to loved it, and I thought it was uh, going to just sweep through there. I'd heard, too, they loved Three Billboards, so I was prepared for all the love that it got there. But, um, uh, no, I was surprised by that. And then I have Mary J. Blige. Who, yeah, that's kind of fun. I think we all want to see that happen. It's she just, was good. I know, I know. But also, she's Mary J. Blige. I mean, yeah, and we them. love it when our pop stars pop up in these. Yeah, uh, and in the old days, they loved any pop star that went dramatic. Like the old days of Bobby Frank Garrett, Sinatra, and right. Peggy Lee. And then that changed. They didn't nominate Courtney Love. They didn't nominate Madonna. But uh, Mary Cher J. Cher has an Oscar. Yes, for Moonstruck. And um, Mary J., you should never say no more drama to her. Because, like, <laughs> her best song, by the way. Uh, yes, and her best performance of that song was on the Grammys. Okay, so uh, Hong, we have Hong Chao. Yeah. I haven't seen Downsizing yet, but everyone uh, says she steals she, the movie. She's, she's terrific. I mean, the only other possible possible nominee would be Tiffany Haddish for Girls Trip, which would be, I think you pointed out, the Melissa McCarthy type of nomination. Right, right, right. Kind of lowbrow humor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but everyone adores her. Everyone adores her. Uh, and she won the New York Film Critics, and that's a pretentious bunch of people. <laughs> you know? I know. Which went for Lady Bird this year. Uh, yes. A, a very female-centric film, unlike the history of the New York Film Critics Circle. So, uh, well, I, I actually think even so Get, Out, Get Out is probably going to be Lady Bird for screenplay. What and, is this? I want your take on Get Out. Uh, because at first, I didn't take it seriously as an awards uh, contender for obvious reasons it's a it's a comedy it's a it's a horror movie it's a commercial film it doesn't have artistic pretension but boy it is consistently doing well at every single yes. major award where it matters and i did think it would be major in that field and but it, why it what makes, am i missing it makes its own genre the jordan peele doesn't want it to be labeled a comedy but it is like you say it's a horror film it's a film about race relations it's it's suspense it's everything uh by creating its own drama it does enter the awards race by becoming a work of art it's not just a summer film. I think it's going to win screenplay. I think Jordan Peele should get a director's nomination and obviously a Best Picture nomination. So you think that Get Out can beat three billboards, Lady Bird, <laughs> and uh, The Post and The Big Sick. Uh, I agree that those aren't in contention to win, but certainly Lady Bird or three billboards can win. Um, there, what, what? Yeah, but Tom, it's months away. It's and, months away. And I'm always wrong. <laughs> no, you actually did quite well. I, the, yeah. the, uh, uh, the thing that Get Out lacks, I think, is artistic pretension. But on the other hand, it's the cool thing. So, you know, we've got like four or five experts saying it's going to win Best Picture. Could that really happen? In other words, it, yes. I, I think it could, too. I think that the, it's, it's that darling little uh, contender that everyone kind of winks at themselves when they discuss in these, in these pretentious little uh, entertainment parties that Michael and I attend uh, in the industry. And, and it becomes like the rebels vote, doesn't it? It's like, uh, get out, I'm, I'm going to go for get out. It, and it, sure. it could steamroll. Well, it's a wide open field, and they're all going to divide each other, all right. these movies. I and mean, of course, the new voting process might favor a movie like Get Out, the way Moonlight snuck in there. Though Faye Dunaway still swears it's La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's always been on her own planet, uh, poor Faye. Uh, and then you've got Call Me By Your Name winning screenplay over Mudbound, Disaster Artist, Molly's Game, and Wonder. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty that's, much a lock. That's a lock, yeah. 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 Let's talk about Best Actress, which yes, let's go up is also episode. wide open, Tom. I it down, is. I've narrowed uh, it down to three. So uh, you've, you, you've got Sally in the first position. Why? She's enchanting in the film, and like I said, Hollywood and the Oscars love a deaf mute. I know, they, yeah. Okay. Right. But J she, Jane Wyman she does from uh, Marley yeah. Mallon oh, to uh, Patty, Patty Duke, Duke, John yeah. Mills, John Mills. <laughs> oh my God! Yes, for, uh, so uh, they Ryan's love, daughter. Oh, look at what you did with you know without even being able to speak, and she did do very well. 
Frances McDormand was fantastic. The scene where she tells off the priest, I won't give it away, but she... But you know what? The, this is not really much of a spoiler, uh, but there is a scene where, because uh, it doesn't advance the plot at all, there's a, she has that Helen Mirren moment that Helen had in The Queen, where the Queen, and I think it was her Oscar moment, when she looks across uh, the, the, the wilderness out there and sees that, that noble deer with the antlers. Remember when the Queen, and yes. it's, it's like, like uh, she had this moment of connection with this wild creature that, that uh, suddenly this great monarch uh, uh, became part of a natural world in a way. And it was just bone chilling. It was, un, no words were spoken, but it was just like, yes. wow, yeah. And, and Frances has that. Uh, there's a scene where a deer just comes, she's sitting by the billboards and a deer just comes up. And she says, uh, I know you're not my daughter, but, and she gives this little, and that we live in a godless world. Such, it, wow, it was this marvelous. And, and the character, all the characters are complicated like that. It's right, surprising. Right, right. She's not mother of the year, you find out. <laughs> she was not the best mother no, by any means. She's not. That makes it a lot more interesting than just this wonderful mother. That would be a TV movie. Wonderful mother loses her daughter, fights for vengeance, you know, fights for justice. This is way more than that. The only thing against Frances is she's already won for playing another small town person solving a mystery, right? <laughs> <laughs> then we, the third choice, obviously, is Saoirse Ronan. Saoirse Ronan. And it could become the year of Saoirse Ronan. Uh, the, I, it, it might be that we're underestimating Ladybug. Uh, it has uh, one of the highest Rotten Tomato scores. It has uh, this universal love. Within days of us posting our video interview with uh, Saoirse and Greta at YouTube, I think it had 80,000 views or something. It was just a staggering. Okay. Uh, the interest in them is so extraordinary. But yet the Academy is a very male I macho thing. Her, she was brilliant, and you even saw some of Greta Gerwig in her, in some of her mannerisms. I just, it's to me, it's Ellen Page and Juno. Like, it's a sarcastic person on the defense. Are, are you, you know what what I mean? actually They're... sizing up an Oscar contender based on the quality of their performance, Michael? Does anyone <laughs> that in the is world a factor. does anyone in the world think Sandra Bullock gave the best performance of the year in The Blind Side? No. Okay, but what is your argument why Saoirse should do with Sandra Bullock? Well, uh, I think that Saoirse Ronan is uh, worthy. I think. Uh, take the actual performance. I, what I, it, to analyze her performance, if I had to find a uh, weak spot there, is she doesn't have the big moment, the big speech, the plate smashing scene That's or something. What I'm saying. That Oscar scene. That's what I'm She's saying. missing that. Uh, but in general, though, overall, you do empathize with her in a powerful way as a viewer. And I think uh, the empathy is what drives the movie so much and why people love it so much. Anyway, if there's this Ladybird train taking off at the Oscars. She goes along for the ride. I would love it if the Oscars have now decided to just celebrate the best performance, not the showiest. Well, or the you most. live in lollipop land all you want and come back to the real world every now well, and then and tell me what it's like in there. Uh, the Post. We didn't talk about The Post. I loved it. You did? Um, but it's really old-fashioned in a way, isn't it? So, I mean, are the Oscar voters going to go for it? I don't even think Meryl's a lock. I put her in, but I'm not certain. She got shut out of SAG. That was startling. Yeah, well, I mean, we've seen her do a lot of historical figures from Florence Foster Jenkins, Julia Child, Margaret Thatcher, Sophie. And uh, <laughs> in this case, it wasn't a thousand percent persuasive. And there was a scene where she's talking to her daughter and crying, and that reeked of Oscar bait. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was her big Oscar speech bait moment. It just seemed very like, oh, we'll give her a crying scene for Oscar bait. <laughs> and of course, a lot of these movies are guilty of that. But she... Delivers. She's great in that scene. Yeah, she, she's always uh, good. Is this going to be one of her legendary performances? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, does Tom Hanks get in? The poor guy hasn't been nominated in, what, 16 years? I have him because, again, it's a weak field, but there were times when he should have gotten in when he didn't. Right. And I was like, what did they have against Tom Hanks all of a sudden? My theory is that familiarity breeds contempt, or freedom, familiarity breeds neglect. Right now, he is a... Uh, uh, one of the three governors of the academy in charge of the acting branch. So, and that's the, the problem Annette Benning has. These, these are people who do volunteer work for the academy. They take on a leadership role to inter interface with the members. And the members just take them for granted after a while. Um, oh. So I think that's Let the problem. Take note to not volunteer for the academy. <laughs> It'll hurt See? my chances. Yeah, exactly. It'll only punish you. But I, Hank, Hank I knew there was a up. reason. Because Hank's he should have been up for Captain Phillips. He should have right. been up for the right. thing where he played uh, Walt Disney. Right. For supporting, right. and uh, in this saving case, Mr. Banks, yeah, his performance is not extraordinary in my opinion in the post, but I think 
he'll get it because it's a weak field. I think uh, being active in these academies helps you early on if you're Margot Martindale at the Emmys and you're there at the Academy events pouring the coffee and passing out the cookies because that's what she does and oh, a lot of the great. others. And uh, you, it's wonderful. And I, but I think that after a while when you become famous and you're part of the establishment, I think they just take you for granted. Okay, well... That's my theory anyway. I have no idea if it's true or he'll, not. he'll get a makeup nomination this year. Um, I think Gary Oldman's going to win just because they love biopics. Oh, uh, yeah. And you know what? Churchill always wins. At, at the Emmys, when uh, John Lithgow was up for the crown, I went back and just said, I took all the roles in modern history, uh, stars nominated for portraying Churchill. They all won. <laughs> and that, and that Benning should play Churchill. <laughs> there you go, in that. She finally uh, got it. Oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, but I, and the interesting, I love the movie The Room. Now, people, we're not talking Room with Brie <laughs> Larson. That was good. There's a movie called The Room by Tommy Wiseau, who wrote, directed, produced, starred. He's a four time flop. Right. Worst, best bad movie ever made. And The Disaster Artist with James Franco is about the making of The Room, and it builds up to that with his friendship with Greg Sestero, played by Dave Franco. And James Franco is going to get nominated he will, for I know. playing the worst actor director in history though Tommy Wiseau to this day I'm sure thinks The Room should have gotten Oscars oh, I'm sure he does he's uh, starting to appear in tow with James at these uh, parties in Hollywood um, and that's that again what matters uh, Franco is working it Franco's at every event yes. he's charming every crowd um, he's got Tommy with him sometimes and uh, he's running a great ground game so I, it's one of those great ironies. But then again, well, Johnny Depp wasn't nominated for playing Ed Wood, but Martin Landau won for playing, <laughs> That's right. for playing Bela Lugosi and Ed Wood. In the other worst movie ever made. So movies about bad movies can <laughs> win Oscars. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, any final thoughts here? Any wild cards that we're not... Uh... Who do we have now? Uh, let's look at actor right here. Uh, Gary Oldman. Timothée, is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. Daniel Day-Lewis. Uh, yeah, Daniel Day-Lewis. He was uh, a presumed front runner. Uh, he's won uh, three times in lead. Uh, but didn't he say this is his last performance? That no, always helps. It's like it last does, chance, does. last chance to give but him the fourth. I, I don't generally like uh, Paul Thomas Anderson movies in general, but I loved this. I thought it was really nice and small, but, but well done and a nice little surprise at the end. And, and I thought, nice. But I think it's going to get three or four nominations. Yeah, yeah. Because of the score and, and the, probably the costumes, costumes of course, and maybe yeah. screen. And he'll get nominated. Then we have Tom Hanks and James Franco. The, that's my five. Now, who could sneak in there? Denzel Washington, Hugh Jackman. That's right. Denzel's done very... We've underestimated him at, uh, these, at these precursor awards, and he's getting in like the Globes and SAG, I believe, right? But uh, the Oscars might remember his sour face when he didn't win last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we'd have to see that again. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, what what would win Michael Musto's uh, favorite movie of the year? It's a tie between Call Me By Your Name and Three Billboards. Okay. But there's a lot of good stuff this year. My two would be Three Billboards, and I, what would my second one be? Uh, I think Shape of Water. And I loved The Post. I thought it was so great. I just love the old... And you know what? I love Darkest Hour. Am I the only one in the world who really loved Darkest Hour? A lot of Gold Derby people had it for Best Picture, and some still do, right? But it, it's kind of losing some it's traction. It's losing st st traction, and I don't know why. It's really what I about, think it deserves visual stuff. I thought you've got Florida Project for Best Picture. That has a devoted fan base. Of I didn't love it. <laughs> uh, it's a love and it a friend of mine says people that see it don't really love it, but I don't know. I but think some people, people do. that love it, really love it. Right. Like in in the and he won Best Director Sean Baker for New York Film Critics and. Uh, uh, that's true, but at New York Film Critics, I was as asking uh, one of the members, actually one of the leaders of the group the other day, what were the movies that, that uh, behind the scenes that were ang angling for the votes, and he said it was four. It was uh, Call Me By Your Name, Lady Bird, and Three Billboards. He said, but Florida Project nipping behind them in a kind of far off third, fourth place. Uh, so it, it, it matters there, but I, I agree with you that it's... A, it's not in such a strong place with the Oscars. See, the more I hear stuff like that, the less I'm confident about Dunkirk winning. How on earth could Dunkirk win? It's really not getting a lot of love from all these critics groups. 
Right, that's true. But it's not a critics movie, on the other hand, so we understand that. We didn't expect it to do well there. Uh, but it does, what I find remarkable about Dunkirk is that it is, it's still technically the leader at Gold Derby with seven votes for Best Picture. It's still, I understand our people put it there for place holding for or, you know, early the summer yeah. and all of that, but it's still there. And there is, a, there is an enormous amount of respect for the film and expectation it's going to do well. And this whole Christopher Nolan is overdue thing matters. It's a, that's what helped uh, Ang Lee. It's what helped um, a lot of them finally win. And Christopher Nolan has never gotten a director nomination at the Oscars. That's right, he's never been nominated. He was for writing, but not for uh, directing. Which is really bizarre. So I think this will be his first nomination for director. What do you think about Blade Runner getting a lot of technical <laughs> things? It was such a flop. Does that tarnish the chances of a movie to get awards? Because this friend of mine, Stephen Schaefer, who's the same friend I mentioned earlier, says we have to wait and see how some of these movies play out, like The Post, how they play out at the box office. That could affect their chances. But it doesn't matter in the craft. Remember Suicide Squad won an Oscar last year for makeup, right? Uh, sometimes... Uh, well, didn't that make a lot of money? That's true, it made a lot of money. But then again, Hurt Locker won Best Picture at one point. And, <laughs> and, and lost a lot of money. Right, right, right. Yeah, but was, I wonder if that factors in. Oh, that was a flop. It was the best visual, but it was a flop. Let's not... It does factor in because they want to vote for winners. They want to vote for successful films. But on, in some cases, um, you know, in the, in the old days, the King's Speech uh, could win Best Picture and, and earn $400 million worldwide. Yes. But then there are the Hurt Locker examples, or Moonlight, which uh, still hasn't cracked a big chunk of money. Um, and the reason I always screw up on these is not just the documentary short subjects and all that stuff, which I mean, how should I know? But <laughs> the sound mixing and sound editing. A, what the hell is the difference? B, if, <laughs> if the voters are watching it on their home console on a screener, how are they supposed to detect whether the sound mixing is better than something they saw in a theater? Ever think about that? No, it's a real insight. What other kind of just, we'll wrap up here with any kind of final uh, Michael uh, words of wisdom when uh, musing on the Oscars. Well, the other thing people keep saying is there's no sweeps anymore. It's not like Titanic or beyond that, you know, Ben-Hur and all those movies where they won so many awards. Have there been maybe no, Lord no, of the Rings no. 3? Not since the preferential ballot came in in the recent years. Right, so just because something like Dunkirk is going to get some visual things, probably cinematography, editing, perhaps, sure. doesn't mean, oh, we're sweeping it to best picture. Best Picture could get a total of three Oscars. That's happened. Remember the days when I was like, how can it get Best Picture? I remember the, I'm so yeah. old, I remember the days of Grand Hotel when it was the only nomination for yes, yes. one Best Picture. <laughs> well, and Jean Harlow doesn't usually land in a Best Picture, but... <laughs> no, no, she doesn't. Well, thank you, Michael. We'll, we'll uh, keep up this discussion. Uh, we're as conflicted as you are about the race, but it's, a, it's so great it's a real race this year. Uh, literally, anything can happen, and this is... That's the way we like our Oscars. We like it because it's an actual competition and there's a lot resting on it. So stay tuned. Thanks. <laughs>